Uh, throwing things off, so yeah, yeah, I had to wait for the end. So, you know, didn't worry for a while. Uh, Monday, March 3rd, dealing with the camp pickup stuff in this Randall's room. Ah, throwing things off. We'll see how things go from there. Uh, you should have one of yawn booklets, and then good job following the direction right there that said make sure your desk was cleared off without me having to yell at you. It makes things easier. And then make sure you talk to me at the end because I have an honor site question for you. Okay. So take off. Um, and then, other than that, let's see. From there, changes to my old room. If you haven't been into my classroom yet, when you go over there, you'll see the fact that I changed it because I wanted it to be Miss San Giorgio's room. So I took a bunch of my stuff down, covered up stuff on my wall, covered up things in that little back area because I'm trying to take away bits of me so I can put in more bits of her. Uh, and so that's one of the things I'm working with is to, so it's not her doing it, it's me doing it. Hank is like, I can't believe what she did to her room. She's like, she had no control of it. That was all me. It was a suggestion from other teachers who had student teachers to try and make it an easier transition. Honor Society. In theory, by the end of the day, I will have your Honor Society information. So those of you who are doing Honor Society, if you come back and try to seek me out, I will hopefully have your yay or nay letter ready to give to you. If not today, then I should be able to have it for you tomorrow, and I will track you down and give you guys those letters. So Honor Society, come let me know, and you either see me after lunch or probably towards the end of the day, and I will hopefully have those for you. See, she talked to you about stuff over there. Did she do the yelling at those of you who owe the stuff for the no. this thing yet, who no. owe the permission slip? No. no. So do I still, uh, who is that, daughter, any permission slip yet? Uh, I believe I turned it in with the money. Uh, apparently not. There's still stuff there. Let's see. Um, I also have a list here I can tell you guys all if you're still missing stuff. Daughtery, good job, you're good to go. We can erase your name off there in just a moment. And then Rome. I need a piece. Well, you're out of luck in the last one I have for now. I know. You should have grabbed the other 12 that she's giving you. Vaish! I'll okay. give her by tomorrow. Alright. Oh, and uh, Daniel. I don't even look good. Hey! Anything yet? No. And then you guys will find out today what we're going to turn in because they have all the fun stuff. Zimmer? I'm not going. You sure? You're going to find out today about what makes it so awesome. And then, okay. No. No. All right. Get these in before you have to worry about money, but this is the big thing. If you want to know if you are owing money or permission slip or like that, I have this. I can let you know. Those of you, uh, once you have your money turned in and you have your permission slip turned in, we are in the process of getting shirts made because a shirt comes with the, what, when we go to camp. You will get your shirt before we go to camp to come, so hopefully in the next week or so. As soon as you have that stuff, I will get your shirt size from you, and then we will start making shirts and giving you your shirts early. So that way, those of you who have paid, you will already get to represent with your fat swag. Uh, and we'll get to hook you up with that. Um, so there. Don't lose this booklet. This booklet, uh, you'll need it for information. As we go through it, I will not be stopping to answer questions. I have a lot of information to give you, not enough time to do it. So, if you turn to the back side of the booklet, you can write down questions as we go through them. Because if you raise your hand, I'm just going to ignore you. So make sure that you write down any questions that pop up in your wee little audience. Okay, here we go. Camp Tecumseh. up. When is it? It comes up the third week of April. Uh, we have the next four weeks of March, and then we leave for uh, spring break. We're gone for a week. We come back for a week, and then we leave again for Camp Tecumseh. So it is the third week of April, uh, the 16th to the 18th. There are two times for Camp Tecumseh. Session one, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's when the Globetrotters go. And then session two, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's when the Heroes go. And then the Stars split. Half the Stars go with the Globetrotters. Half the Stars go with us. The uh, stars whose last names go up through G go with the Globetrotters, and then the ones whose last names go H through Z go with us. And so we'll be leaving on Wednesday. We'll be up there. Uh, Wednesday, Friday, Hero Stars. I'll be up there the entire week because I'm one of the people that runs Camp to come, so, so I'll be up there the entire time. So you'll see me there. Uh, cost and due dates is $136. That includes everything your sleeping, your food, your t shirts, your awesomeness. Uh, Friday, March 21st, and when it all comes due, which is right before um, spring break. Uh, parent chaperones don't have to pay because they're going and dealing with you guys. We're not going to make them also pay. So they get to go for freebies. So just the kids have to pay, no parents. 
What is it? It's awesome, is what it is. Uh, Camp and Coast is the outdoor education. Uh, basically, we use the outdoors to teach you guys. It's an excuse for us to run around and have fun. Mr. Bogiak, there's nothing fun about being outdoors. Ah, just wait um, until I start telling you about all the fun things that we're going to do. I understand for you guys it sounds scary because it's outdoors and there's woods and there's like at least three trees, maybe four, uh, and there might be two bugs. And so because of that, it's going to freak you out and mess with your head. Hold on to it because trees are like the least of your issues while you're there. Are you demonstrating waiting to the end for questions? That is so nice of you. Um, uh -huh. The learning classroom is 224 acres, uh, which is big. Uh, there's a lot of trees and woods and stuff like that while we're there. Um, you will see fewer teachers at Camp Tecumseh than you will here at school. Because while we're there, one, for the most part, we only take fun teachers because people that I want to hang out with. Two, your kid person that you're with all day is not a teacher. You're with a high school kid all day. And that's where we go out and hire these really good high school kids. They get to come back, and they're the ones that are going to be leading you. So for the most part, aside from dinner time, the meals when we eat, and maybe at night when we do some of our activities, that's about the only time you see teachers. The rest of the time, you're on your own. You and a bunch of kids and a high school kid trampsing through the woods trying to find all kinds of sciencey, mathy things to do. And you guys are on your own. If you don't go to Camp Tecumseh, you spend your whole time sitting in the library with teachers sitting there yelling at you the entire time, which is why it's much more fun to go than to not go because it's really, really boring here. Plus, you have to do this big packet of work anyway. The packet that we do over the three days, if you don't go, you spend spending here in the library working on that packet of work. Well, then, Mr. Boviak, I'm just going to stay home the entire time. That's fine. Then as soon as you show up back at school, they go, plap, plap, and they put the packet down and go, have fun, now you have homework. So one way or the other, you have to do all the work, so you might as well do it there while you're getting candy. Mr. Bobiak, did you say candy? I did. Uh, the reason being, and you'll figure this out here in just a moment, that since the high schoolers are the ones that are with you the entire time, and the high schoolers used to be a kid um, yesterday, uh, so because of that, they figured out that for some reason, kids work better when you give them sugar. Uh, and so they'll spend most of the time they're there trying to ply you with sugar and throwing candy at you the entire time. So not only do you get to do work, but you also get candy thrown at you. Sometimes, literally, they'll just chuck it right at you. You're just like, all right, they'll gobble it right off the ground. It's kind of scary. Um, uh, you have a, basically, you have a group of like five to seven kids, probably five to six-ish of other people in your group. What do we do? Awesomeness. Um, we stand next to trees. <laughs> Great picture. Uh, I didn't make this PowerPoint. Um, while you're out there, one of the things you're going to be doing is running around in the woods. You'll be doing GPS hunting. There's math and science things that are involved. Um, you'll stand next to trees and sniff water bottles. I don't know if um, But you'll be out there doing tree things. Um, science! Yes, there is all kinds of science involved. I am definitely not going to read all that because I could care less because I teach English. But there's definitely sciencey things. There's like trees. And like, I don't know, like you weigh a bug or something like that and like look at a, a fish or something. But there's science stuff that happens. I just don't know what all the science -y things are. There's also math things that happen um, where you have to like measure the height of a tree or the weight. I don't know. There's <laughs> math stuff too. I don't deal with that stuff. I deal with, there's English. English. You have to talk about your feelings. Like you saw a bird. How does that make you feel? And you're like, yeah, I feel like I can fly. I don't know, there's English stuff too, but there's lessons, but the lessons are only as, I mean, there's learning because it's school, but it's sort of secondary to all the other fun stuff that we're doing there. Like, there's um, the black hole, which is a hole, that's black, uh, that you, you go, it's basically a big slide, uh, but it's an enclosed slide, like a tunnel slide that you have to go down, and so when you go on a sled, because it makes you go faster, and you learn about friction and the facts, and when you go on your butt, you sort of drag, when you go on a sled, it goes pew, and it shoots down the whole thing. You're going to figure out your velocity. You have to figure out your weight and you time how quickly you go down the whole thing. And you sort of have like different people, like who goes down faster, the really small kid or the really big kid. And so that's how we use science and math. Mr. Brodak, that's not science and math. That's fun. Shh, don't tell people. Um, we're telling people that's science and math. Uh, and so that's sort of how the science and math stuff works. And then there's social studies because there's like places. I think that's geography. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> More stuff that we do. Um, there's a lake. 
uh, with river dolphins in it. And the mist river, river dolphins don't live in lakes. These do. They'll find out. There's little things named nests in the ground. There's bubbles that come up. It's really cool. Um, and you're going to get a chance to go canoeing as one of the math and science things that you do because, I don't know, then you figure out speed or something. Uh, the problem is, well, one, you wear life vests because look around. These are the people you're going there with. There's a good chance one of them might be an idiot. Uh, and what happens when you put an idiot in a canoe on a lake? That's right. Bad things happen. Uh, and so because of that, there's every chance that they might fall into the water. And you might be in the canoe with them because there are three people in a canoe. And so if you're in the canoe with the idiot, then there's every chance that you might be wet. So choose wisely when you get into the canoe. So you'll spend some time canoeing and stuff like that. There's hiking. You'll see four of the trees in the background. Four of the five trees are right there around that area. There's another... Um, here and here are two more of the black holes. Those are big tubes that you get to sled down and go through and stuff like that. And so it's even got a little bit of the smaller ones and stuff like that. That's sort of the rock climbing that we have where you get this not actual rock. It's called Mount Wood, which is like this four or five story tall wooden structure with little rock things on it. And you get to climb up that. At the top of it, Got one there's a little chocolate owl that you can get up to and you get to take a piece of. And then here in the background, we'll do um, flying um, tissue paper balloons. Now, by tissue paper, it doesn't mean this kind of tissue paper. It's like when you wrap a present in a little tissue paper that goes on the inside to make it look all pretty. You're going to make a big tissue paper hot air balloon. We have these big air, hot air blowers. And so that's where the math and science comes in. You have to go out and go, win and figure out what direction it's going to go and be like, I think it's going to go that way, science. Uh, and so you'll figure out stuff like that, figure out which direction it's going to go and how fast it's going to be. And so you get to make little balloons and you get to climb up and down. They have an easy one, a medium one, a hard one, and like an are you crazy kind of level. And you get to choose which one you want to go on. And if you fall and die, it's okay. There's a, rope. There's a hole and blackness, black hole, well named. Uh, as you can see, there's two of them on this one. You get to race each other, and that's where you get to figure out who's faster on the whole thing. With the big kid or a small kid, you get to push yourself off. I'm sure there's science from after all somewhere. Uh, this will be part of the main camp area. And so here, uh, where you have a balloon that they're getting ready to do. This is what the cabins look like. So you can see in the background, so you can see they're not like little teepees that you're sleeping in or anything like that. They're just normal buildings with showers and beds and stuff like that. This whole area here is like this big open area in the middle of the camp that we use for the main play area for rec time and stuff like that. That's the hot air blower that we use to like fly the balloons. Uh, let's see, uh, that's all the exciting stuff there. Oh. One of the things you'll figure out in your groups with your high schoolers, a lot of times you guys will do bonding things, depending on how cool your high schooler is. And sometimes they'll, they'll bring like costumes for you guys all to wear to bond. Like you all have like sombreros or like little ski masks or something like that, whatever your thing is. You'll like little chants that you get to do. So you'll see here like this particular group, they all have the big sombreros that they're wearing. Sometimes they'll do those little uh, Hawaiian legs that you'll wear. It depends on how cool your group is and what your main thing is. Mr. Broviak, do we have to wear that stuff on our roof? No, you can be a loser. No one's going to stop you from being a loser. You're welcome to embrace that. Be like, no, I'm going to be grumpy. That's fine. I'll make fun of you the entire time. But you're always welcome to make that choice. Square dancing, uh, which I know might sound scary at first. 15 years ago when I first went, I was like, that sounds really stupid. It's not. Uh, it's awesome. Like the line dancing that we do here at school, uh, we'll do that same kind of thing, except there's ones you've never seen before that are really cool. Uh, one, the counselors also do it, and the counselors are better than you. Plus, I do it, and I'm better than the counselors, so I put them to shape. And you better believe I dance every single time because I rock on. Once again, do you have to dance? No. You're welcome to sit off the side and be a loser. I won't stop you from doing that. You will just sit there like, that looks like fun, but I'm not cool enough. I'll come over and I'll like dance with you and stuff like that and mock you while you sit there crying. Until then, it's like you stand up and join us, we'll get in there and stuff like that, and we'll, we'll throw down and be good stuff. So that's one of the nights we'll have uh, square dancing. We used to do Olympics. We're in the process of, of changing it. We don't have done Olympics for the last couple of years. Here's where they're like beating a child or something like that. I'm not sure what it's called. They're like trying to chop off her head. <laughs> this was another one of the Olympics we did where you had a balloon and you had time. And you had to try and see how long you keep the balloon in the air without using your hands. You could only use your feet and your head. And so it's like a competition between it's teams like and stuff soccer. like that. Yeah, it's like craft soccer, sure. 
Well, we don't need that anymore. Right. One of the guys who do storytelling, and this is Mr. Jackson, who's from Riverside, although he used to teach here. And he's a really good storyteller. He tells you stories about when he was a kid and stuff like that, and being in the woods and crazy stuff like that. Now, he's fascinating to hear all these crazy stories about how he hurt children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll do skits on one of the nights. Uh, the way the skits work um, is the little plays put on by the high schoolers and put on by the teachers. And we get together and do little plays and fun stuff like that. And this is one called Centipede. Uh, for you guys, I'll be the one that's doing uh, this. I actually might need to be uh, running that main one there and doing that. Then there'll be a whole, that's like a whole evening of fun. That's where you guys will take like most of your pictures. We that one night. So what do we do? Uh, you know, stuff. That's awesome. Frequently asked questions. Is this school? Well, yeah, technically. I mean, it's run at school. You're not at school. You're not going to see nearly as many teachers as you do at school. But if you make poor choices, then we do get to beat you, just like we do here at school. So it's the same idea as far as that goes. But it's school, but the much, much more fun version with much more candy and much fewer teachers. Uh, so it's that version of school. Who's the principal at camp? Uh, Ms. Thorpe and Mr. Butts don't go up to camp. They're usually here dealing with other stuff. We have another principal that we use at camp. That guy. Uh, because he's pretty scary. Except for the heroes, I get to start stepping in. I become principal. Which, Mr. Brogiak, you're all happy and smiling. I am. But I also get to be very inventive while we're at camp because I don't have to worry about the tensions. I can do other horrible, frightening things to you while we're at camp. But for the most part, usually it's not a major issue. I don't have a whole lot of behavior problems at camp. One of the reasons why I like camp is usually not a behavior problem that you're having fun. Kids don't act bad while they're enjoying themselves. So behavior at camp, not a problem. Plus, this year, I have good kids, so I don't have to really worry about it. I've had bad kids in the past. This year, the biggest issue we have is kids not doing homework, which isn't really all that much of a problem. So I don't have to yell at you too much. Um, if it becomes too much of an issue and my yelling at you doesn't fix you, then that's when I send you over to him, and he doesn't even smile when he's happy, let alone when he's grumpy, so he'll be much more angry at you. Plus, he doesn't even care about you because you're not a little brother. Rumors that are true, things that happen all the time that kids ask us about. Um, sat a kid on the porch for four hours, made him watch his group rock climb. Four hours, yeah. Uh, easily. There's that one of that big main area. That's right where all the rec time fun stuff is. We get to have recess while we're there. Um, and so if you make poor choices, you lose recess. And I make you sit on a chair in this little area where the kids can't come talk to you. And you have to sit there with all the grumpy teachers. And there's not very many grumpy teachers that go. But I make sure the grumpy teachers sit right there next to you and like, what's wrong with you? Why are you have so many issues? And they sit there and yell at you and stuff like that while everyone else has fun. And then you also like the rock climbing and stuff like that. So if you're an idiot, you make poor choices, and you make other people's lives miserable, then you get to come hang out with me. Does it happen very often? No. Does it happen to heroes? Seldom. Has it ever happened to heroes? Like once in the last 10 years that I can remember. Typically, my kids behave. That's one of the things I really like about camp. It's not been a problem. For some reason, stars. I don't know, whatever reason, stars. They go insane while they're there. Uh, but typically, it's not my kids. We've sent the kid home at midnight by calling his parents. Yeah, this happened. If you're that bad of a kid that we have to call home, we will make your parents drive up two hours to come pick you up and then drive home two hours in the middle of the night. Um, we've actually had kids get sick, which happens on occasion, but usually it's more for behavior problems. But my parents can't come pick me up. That's fine. We'll call Mr. Butts to come get you. Um, and then he'll get to yell at you for a two-hour drive on the way home, which is probably even more scary because he doesn't love you at all. Um, and so, but once again, has it ever happened to a hero? Not that I remember. Has it ever happened? Yes. Typically two stars. I don't know why. They have problems. Um, and then sometimes they go with other people. If you get into a fight with your counselor, I like your counselor more. I'm telling you that right now. I hired them. Uh, they came in here and interviewed with me. They're probably a kid I had in class three years ago. Um, I'm going to side with them every time. People are like, my counselor just shanked a kid in the woods. And the counselor's like, no, I didn't. I'm going to believe the counselor. <laughs> you know, they're covered in blood, still holding a knife in their hand. I'm like, I don't that kid tells the truth. Three years from now, there's a good chance you're going to want to interview and become a counselor, and I'm going to like you better than my seventh graders at that time, too. Oh, yeah. so if you get into a fight with your counselor, your counselor's right. Now, if there's a major issue, come talk to me. Like, Mr. Brody, you saw the knife in his hand. Like, I know, I'll go talk to you. She's that kid. And the witnesses, that's a bad thing. Um, we'll never believe your side of the story. You know that. You have me in class. I don't believe you now. <laughs> what difference are trees going to make? So realize this, I'm not going to believe you there either. 
if we punish you at camp, it does haunt you here. It's not Vegas, where things that happen in Vegas stay in Vegas. It's not happening here. What happens at camp comes home and haunts you for days on end. So choose wisely. If you make poor choices there, it'll come back and make your life unhappy. Do we take charter buses? You betcha. We charter big yellow ones look exactly like this. The same charter buses you get every day here at school. So, yeah, we take school buses to get used to it. Um, with these buses, Mr. Bobiak, is it a comfortable ride? It's a two-hour ride, and the boys' buses are better than the girls' buses. Why? Because the boys pack less. Because everything that you take goes in your seat with you. So if you pack a whole lot, you have less area to sit. Well, Mr. Brogiak, that means you're going to have two to three people in a seat. Now, two to three people in a seat, plus all the stuff you take with you, boys show up with a Ziploc bag and go, this is my stuff for four days, and they're good to go. Girls, like, I got all, and so, yeah, girls, you got your teddy bear while your arms sticking out the side. That's the way it's going to work, unless you're smart and pack less, but that's up to you. So, those are the buses we... On the bus ride, it's two hours there, then two hours back, three days apart, and that's it. What do you do on the bus ride? I don't know. I ride the bus with you. For the most part, I try to tune you out and go to my happy place. Uh, but I don't know. You guys do like staring contests, high five each other, stuff like that. Whatever your particular issue might be. Can we wear hats? Yes and no. Yes, you can wear hats, but only outside. It well, or in your cabins. I don't care about that. But inside the main buildings at camp, you cannot wear a hat. It's disrespectful. Um, and so while you're there, I'll remind you, hey, don't wear your hat aside, it's disrespectful. If you keep wearing a hat, I take it from you, and you don't get it back until you write me an essay about respect and how you should make good choices and stuff like that. So don't wear hats inside, and you should be fine. Um, outside, wear a hat all you want, because especially in the morning when you wake up and you're like getting ready to take off, he's like, oh. some of you don't have the awesome hairstyle that I have, so because of that, you might actually have to try and control yours, and just like, boom, boom, done. And you'd be good to go. Now, on the inside, we all have hat heads, so it doesn't matter. The bond. Can you chew gum? Yes. Nonstop. I can care less. You can chew gum. You can chew gum inside. You can't have a hat on. Keep chewing gum. Have a good time. Will you chew gum? Not as much as you think because counselors are throwing candy at you nonstop. So, because of that, you're not going to be chewing gum because they're giving you candy. <laughs> True story. Um, interviews. When I did have the counselors come back, I asked them a whole bunch of questions. Do you remember your counselor? What did you enjoy about camp? What would you do different? One of the main things that pops up, I go, have you already planned out what candy you're going to bring? Nine out of ten kids already knew what candy they were going to bring. So they came like, I already know I'm going to be bringing Sour Patch Kids and these kind of the Swedish fish. I'm going to bring those M&Ms and those things melt. And so they like, already have like, this list of what candies to bring because apparently they eat the candy too. So they run through a whole bunch of sugar issues that they do because they're in high school. Apparently high schoolers like sugar. Frequently asked questions. Does everyone go? For the most part, yes. Do we have people not go? On occasion. The three main areas people don't go, one, religious purposes. If you don't go because of religion, that's absolutely fine. I understand it. It's one of those things that pops up. Do we have kids not go because of behavior? On occasion. Uh, for this year, so far, no. I don't have any kids on my behavior list that can't go, that have such deep issues that you shouldn't be going for that reason. Are there kids in the seventh grade who aren't going for behavior? Yes. Are they on my team? No. Are they a star? <laughs> so far. <laughs> Shocked? I know. Um, and then the third one is some kids that choose not to go because they're afraid they're not going to have fun. I can't make you go. If you don't want to go, it's up to you. I highly recommend it because I will guarantee you'll have more fun there than you will have here. For one, I'm there and not here, so how can you have fun here? But those are the three main reasons kids don't go to camp. Um, do you have to go? No. If you want to stay here, it's fine. I don't recommend it, but I also recommend you do homework. You guys don't pay attention to me on that one either. So obviously not everything I say works with you. Do you pick our groups? Yes and no. If I like you, yes. If I don't like you, no. Because who's in complete control of all the groups and your buses and your cabins? This guy. So I control. Now, how much do I like you? It depends. If you're honor society, congratulations. I like you a lot. You get to pick a yes. lot of your group. You get to go, I like this kid, this kid, this kid, this kid, this kid. Like, well, that's too many. Now, if you're not honor society, but you still make good choices and I like you, I'll probably let you choose a buddy. I mean, you don't get to pick your whole group, but you can pick like one person. You're like, I really like this person. I'll let you hang out with them the entire time. If I don't like you, no, because <laughs> that's the way joy works. Now, with that, if you pay attention to the announcements, they keep saying the choices you make today shape your world tomorrow. Here's where those choices come in. 
those choices you made last semester when I decided if I like you, that affects now what groups are going to be. Now you're all going to get a little piece of paper that you fill out that says who do you want to have in your group. The way it works is those of you I like, I make sure those people show up in your group. Those of you I don't like, the people that you write down, I make sure that you never see them the entire time that you're there because I have that power and I'm evil. Mr. Wojak, do you like me? If you have to ask, you already know the answer. Um, when do I find out who is in my group, cabin, table, etc.? Once again, depends on how much I like you. For the most part, you won't find out until you get to camp. What we'll do is while you're here, before you leave that week after spring break, I will tell you what group you're in. I'll say group R, group F, group D, group E. Now, what you have to do from there is go around to every kid on the heroes team and go, are you group R? Are you group R? Are you group R? And until eventually someone goes, I'm group R, and you go, I like you. Are you group R? <laughs> so you have to always interview every single person until you get to camp. When you get to camp, they go, everyone in group R, come over here. And you all get together and go, oh, there's group R. Unless I really like you, then you can come let you come talk to me like that week. And if I'm like in a really good mood, I might tell you. But if not, then I'll just make up random things and try to mess with your head because issues. So for the most part, you'll find out your group. You just won't find out who's in your group until you get there. Same thing with like your lunch table. I'll find like you're at table five, you're at table six. Unless you go around and ask everybody, you'll never find out. Um, so you won't find out officially until you get there. Is the food good? Yeah, it's delicious. Um, we don't really have issues with food. It's normal food. It's not a buffet style. They just serve oh. one thing, like nice chicken fingers and french fries. Um, and that's what they serve. But the food they serve is good. It's like corn dogs, hamburgers, french fries. Normal, sometimes they do pasta. Uh, it's normal food type stuff. If you don't like it, they do have a salad bar. And you are more than welcome to eat the salad bar. And it's a good salad bar. I'm not a big salad person. Even I like their salad bar. So you're more than welcome to go use the salad bar if you want. Will I starve if I'm a vegetarian? Well, we just mentioned you're in a salad bar. Plus, it's the woods. You're a vegetarian. As you're walking along, leaf, leaf, knock, knock, you're good to go. I think that's what vegetarians eat anyway, so I think you're good. Are the cabins nice? Yeah, they are. They're actually, they're just like any normal building. They don't have bugs on the inside. There's air conditioning. You have like a little mattress you get to sleep on. There's little bunks. There's showers attached to them. There's bathrooms in there. You're not sleeping in a teepee. It's just a normal looking building. Um, are there bugs at camp? That pops up. Yes, there's bugs at camp. It's outdoors. Are there bugs inside the cabins? No. I mean, in 15 years of me going, I've never had a bug like walk across my bed or in my back because that would freak me out. Uh, so we're not freaked out yet, so we're still good to go. I've seen bugs there. I mean, you walk around like there's a bug, there's a bug, but they don't like crawl into the cabin, so it's not a major issue while you're there. Um, so you, you should be fine as far as the bugs and the cabins. They're nice. Um, do you have free time? Yeah, you have recess. Uh, honestly, two days. Uh, you have recess the first day and the second day. The third day you don't because we're leaving in the morning, so there's not really time. Unless you're in a good group. If you get everything done on the third day, you get recess. And that's to reward the groups that actually work. If your group doesn't work, not so much recess for you. And the recess, there's like an area where you can go buy food. Uh, they have a store that opens. You can go buy swag, like this shirt that I got there. Um, they have like soccer you can play, there's games, footballs you can throw, frisbees. They have the octagon of death. That's right, the octagon of death. It's called the Gaga Pit. Yeah, it's uh, and you get inside of it, you go to the ball. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, if you've never played octagon of death, it's great. You'll see I'm there and I play octagon of death all the time because it's an octagon and there's death involved. Uh, so it's all kinds of fun. So we'll talk about that when you get there too. Red brain, sleeping bag, pillow, bedroll. Um, they don't give you anything besides a mattress. So if you want to have a pillow, bring a pillow. If you want to have something to cover you up at night if you don't freeze, bring it. I'm personally not a sleeping bag person. I bring like a sheet and like a blanket. And that's what I wrap myself up in like a little, so like a little cocoon. And then that's fine with me. Um, you will have counselors in your cabin and you will have a parent in your cabin. You will not have teachers in your cabin. So you don't have to worry about having any of us in there. Uh, except in the morning, when it's time to wake up, we'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, warm clothes, if it's snowed, I have no idea what the weather's going to be like. Can you look outside? It's crazy. It's only been February. We've gone from 60 degrees to negative 10 within three days. So in April, I don't know. We've gone in the past, and it's been 70 degrees, and everyone wears t-shirts and shorts, and it's awesome. I've also been there the next year when it was snowing, and everyone had to wear parkas. I have no idea what it's going to be. Just make sure that you pay attention. 
because you do not want to be the kid that shows up in a t-shirt and shorts when it's parka weather. Or be the kid that shows up with the winter coat and everyone else is wearing shorts. Because all we can do is laugh at you. Uh, which makes me feel better, but doesn't make you feel better. So pay attention to the weather when you get closer to it. <sighs> Deodorant. Um, when we're there, you hike like 10 to 12 miles throughout the day. It's a lot. It doesn't feel like it, because once again, when you're having that much fun, you don't pay much attention to it. But it's exercise that you're not used to, and so all of a sudden, your body goes... <laughs> and stink bubbles come out of you at all different kinds of crazy places. You want to make sure we cover stink bubbles as much as possible, so you use deodorant. Are you waiting until the end for questions? Good job. With the deodorant, I recommend you use deodorant. Don't use Axe body spray. The reason I recommend you don't use Axe body spray is, one, uh, it doesn't react well with lots and lots of sweat. The girls are going to look at you like you're funny. And two, when you spray it inside the cabin, it doesn't go away. So that night, when it's time to go to bed, your cabin is still going to reek of Axe body spray. Which means that night, when people can't sleep because they're choking to death, they're going to do what's called beating you in your sleep. And we're going to let them because they should. So don't use that as a type of actual deodorant. Uh, check the packing list. It's on the back of here. It's like the second to last page. I will email it. Actually, it's the last page. It's the second to last page. I will email this out to your parents and let them know when it gets closer to try and help them out in case you're special and don't follow directions. I'll let them know. Um, the dress. Does the dress code apply? Yes and no. Like for PJs, I can care less. Uh, but like out on the trails, there's stuff I don't want to see. So yes, it still applies. I don't want to see bits of you that I don't want to see at school. I don't want to see there either. Now, are we going to be measuring you? No. Just make sure that it fits. I don't look at you and go, yeah, when I see you, it's be okay. It's be a major issue. Um, girls, you're only there for two and a half days, pack lightly. If you bring a whole bunch of stuff, I won't let you get on the bus. I will take your two bags and go, pick one of them, and you go, but I can't. I'll go, chose for you, and it becomes that bag. So you want to make sure that you, you're only there for two and a half days, you're going to have to convince what you're taking. <laughs> Things you're allowed to bring, soft drinks. Uh, for the first day, you can. You can bring a soft drink for that lunch, but then the rest of the time, you can't bring like a whole thing of monster to keep into your bag because I'm not going to go around and check that you have counselors in there. And as soon as the counselors, they're paid to be narcs and they come tell on you, you're like, I'm a kid right there that's just like taking the monster. Da, 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 just like, <laughs> they're going to come let us know and I'm going to take the rest of it. Which the bad news is, a lot of you guys are flat out addicted to caffeine. Caffeine is a drug. If you've never gone through caffeine withdrawal, it's unpleasant. You get grumpy, you get a headache, your body gets all twitchy and weird. And so if you do nothing but drink huge old monsters every day when you get to camp, you're not going to have access to that. And all of a sudden, by day two or day three, you're going to have a headache and you're going to be grumpy. And you're going to come talk to me and go, Mr. Bobby, I don't feel well. I'm like, did you have a monster today? And you'll go, no. I'm like, did you have one yesterday? And you'll go, a big one. And I'll go, <laughs> sucks to be you. Get out there. And you have to keep walking in while you're crying. And I'll use, use your tears to power you on. So start weaning yourself off. That week before we go, start drinking less caffeine. Because if not, then all you're going to have is unhappiness. Knives, don't bring them. You'll stab people. Um, plus, that way you can't attack me, so not too bad. Uh, iPods, tablets, cell phones. There's no reception at camp. Not because I have magic powers to stop it. I wish I did. That'd be awesome. But because it's in the woods. The woods are in the boonies. The boonies are related or next to the middle of nowhere. In the middle of nowhere, there's no reception. Now, this particular middle of nowhere is also in a bowl. B-O-W-L, and because of that, cell phone reception doesn't come into this big rocky area where we are. So for the most part, your cell phone is useless while you're there. Plus, you can't take pictures inside the cabins. Not because they're special, but because the cabins are connected to the showers. When people come out of showers, they're not wearing clothes. And if you're in there taking pictures, when a person comes out and goes, ah it gets awkward real fast. So because of that, no picky clicking in the cabins. So will you end up bringing your cell phone anyway? Probably. You don't listen to half of what I tell you. But realize if it breaks or bad things happen, all we do is send it home in a little baggie full of your tears. So keep that in mind. So you can't do anything with you while you're there because you can't have it on the trail. You don't get in trouble. So just be smart. <sighs> After all that, oh, that's when we're at the little middle. We sing songs together and stuff like that. It's fun. Um, questions we can go through from there. Moyer. Can we have like 
a set time that we have, like, lights out. Yo, I forgot. Yes, we do. Thank you for asking that one. A set time, yes. For both lights out and lights on. And if you keep staying up late, we come in there, we yell at you and stuff like that. But lights on is a more fun one. Because there is a time you have to get up at 6 a.m. that you have to get up in the morning. And at oh 7 a.m. you have to leave the cabin. Mr. Boy, we have to get up at that time. Heck no. But guess who wakes you up if you don't? You. you this guy! But wait, it gets better. Because when I come in there to wake you up, it's not me just gently just shaking me awake, going, wakey, wakey, fucking wakey, wakey, wakey. Hopefully you have seen my megaphone. Uh, I, I bring no. a big megaphone and has that right next to your ear. And we have what's called a high-powered spotlight. As you get close to things, it's bright and actually burn things and set them on fire. So when you get really close to you and you're still asleep, we have one person rip off the blankets while I scream at you and turning on the light like that. <laughs> you have traumatic experiences. So because of that, typically waking up is a good experience for you. So I don't want to come home. I mean, I'm happy if you don't wake up. You realize it only benefits me. Yeah. Can we bring perfume? I don't recommend it. I mean, you're going to have nature's perfume all over you, but if you want to, why don't you want to? Yeah. Well, one of the things with both perfume and with shampoo, flowery smells, bugs like that. So they come towards you, especially bees while we're out there, because you smell like flowers. What do bees like? Flowers! flowers. So that's one of the problems we've had in the past. Mickey? Because um, we be in the same group as, like, the stars. Yeah. Okay. Most definitely. Zebra? Uh, I just, oh, um, let me think, go to someone else. Sure. Like, when we get in trouble. I think so. George! Um, when's the lights out time? I think it was like 10 It's 30. 11. What's up, man? Did you say on this? I think my son was last night. 11. 11. Why are you chewing like that? Yeah. Um, it would be just boys, but it would be <laughs> No, I just ran with you guys. Random. <laughs> Matt? Um, so, I think one of the counselors in my neighborhood said that she would like to Make a request. That's fine. As long as you don't mind having them as a counselor. They can't request you, they wouldn't like torture you the whole time. But as long as like you're okay with it, they're okay with it. I have no problem with that. We like our counselors. Grant. Um, is the food better than our cafeteria food? I don't know. I like our cafeteria food, so. It's nasty. Sure. The cafeteria food. Lamb. Why can't we really have knives? Why can't you really have knives? So you don't stab people. Because yeah. you have no need to stab them. Gabe. That's a good question. It's a good thing everyone would just ask that question. Daughtery. What type of stuff do, you, yes. do they sell at the thing? Uh, T-shirts. They sell some snacks, some food. They sell some, like pop, uh, knickknacks. They have like khaki sacks. They have frisbees. All just random stuff. If you buy them at the rec time, you can't. You can't bring your own. Murray. No. I know. They have archery there. It's just not something that's available to us, which is unfortunate. I think it'd be fun too, but apparently it's kind of scary. Vaish? Um, are we, like, in the cabin, if you have your, like, phone, are we allowed to play it on the, are we allowed to use it in the cabin? As long as you don't use the camera, it's probably. Yeah. Zemer? Lights out is at 11, I just checked. There you go. And, um... I forget it again. Kenny. Oh, is anybody run away or escape? It's in the middle of nowhere, so they don't even know. You can run away and just get tweet. What happens like if what if we're like on our phones after lights out? What do you guys do about it? Uh, all right, so get this. A couple of years ago, I had a kid, not a bad kid, but he had his iPod, and he kept turning, yeah, would help the kid? Yeah, that's fine. And he kept turning on his iPod at night, and so what happens is we went into a little cabin, and I was like, lights off, stuff like that, and I knew this kid was going to keep doing it. So the cabins can be pitch black at night, like no indoor lights in there whatsoever. So they go ahead, and I knew this kid was going to make the poor choice. We go ahead and turn off all the lights, and I'm like, no more lights on, no more poor choices. So I sit there and I wait, we go ahead and close the door, knowing that he doesn't make the poor choice. I open the door again, and I step into the room, and I shut the door behind me. It didn't make any sound. So knowing, I memorized the layout of the little cabin. So I walked slowly to where I knew this kid's bunk was, 
pitch black, and I waited. I just stood about this close to this one, waiting. And all of a sudden, because the kids kept complaining, because he kept turning on his iPod and playing his music, and they couldn't sleep. As soon as he turned it on, as soon as it came on, I reached out, grabbed it from his hand, ripped it back, and all he did was scream like a little girl. <laughs> he had no idea. I was like, boom! I was like, that's mine! <laughs> And turned around and just walked out. Awesome. Um, wow. But other than that, I realize I probably bought it. So when I tell you not to do something and keep doing it, you're just saying, Mr. Bobby, can you be creative and problem solve this? And the answer is yes. Yes, I do. Yeah, it was great. The other teachers just laughed. They thought it was the best thing they've ever What happy days. That and waking kids up. Granted. Oh, Oh yeah, can we um, bring chargers for our iPods and other things? There's not very many plugs inside there, so yes, but you might be out of luck. Because you're going to have like 15 kids in there and like four plugs. So, yeah. And that's why you can't bring Yeah, I'm going to turn it off. Like, or not. You can do it. That's okay.